Uh, we're live with no distractions. Hello, everybody. We got some things that we're gonna diary up today. Uh, I'm diary. Here. I hardly know her. Oh, okay. Okay. Good start. All right. Who's gonna Who's gonna talk about free talk? Me, me, me. Go, go, go. Well, you got so, your movie segment, so don't do it now. Today's the oh. best week because oh. today, Get your today I start my full week off of work. Oh. At the same time that Pokemon Unite and Genshin Impact 2.0 came out. What? Did you schedule it yes. for, for this week? Uh, <laughs> no, I, no, I didn't know that it was going to come out. Because I scheduled this week off over a month ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And I didn't know the release of this until, like, two weeks ago. So I was like, oh, my God, that's going to be the best fucking shit ever. Oh, I am envious. I wish I could take off next week. Let me tell you, Bradley deserves this one. He does. I will say, like... Our job gives us unlimited paid time off, and in a year of working there, I have only taken five days off, and what? only one of and only one of those was for fun. Uh, the all the other ones were like traveling or deals. tragedy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, dude. I pretty much have only had one actual day off in the past year, and so I was like, "Hey, I'm I'm gonna take a week off," and they're like, "Yeah." Bradley has taken an unjust amount of responsibility upon himself. Uh, I mean, he is the head honcho yeah. of uh, of the engineering squad, so. But yeah, I'm about to fucking eat this week. Yeah. You can yeah, do some traveling too, right? Or is... Yeah, I mean, go see family and then, you know, yeah. come back. Play Fun. And get you back. Oh, that's exciting. Very jealous. Uh, what else we got? I can go. Um I just wanted to briefly mention, because I talked about it before, that I did beat Yakuza 3 since last podcast. I was talking about it. Woo! Um, okay, all right. <laughs> Actually, no, you're right. You should clap, because it's a little hard. <laughs> no, way. It's a little hard to do Yakuza 3, because the way the Yakuza series works is... Yakuza 0 is the sixth installment, but the first chronologically, and it is the best the best instance of making a new game to bring in fresh blood, because it actually revitalized the entire franchise in 2017, um, with one of the best games that I've played. So, you play 0, which came after the first 5, and then you play mm -hmm. the remake of 1 and 2, which came mm -hmm. out after 0, but then you have to play the remasters of 3, 4, and 5, which are PS3 games, and you're playing the remaster, not a remake. So things are a little jank. Had to go backwards. Uh, this one has Kiryu run an orphanage, uh, and <laughs> then he tried. <laughs> well, he finally got out of his Yakuza life. The, the running theme of the story is that yeah, Kiryu is very done with his shit, but they really need him because he, they know he has plot armor, so it's like, Kiryu, dude, without you, we can't solve this big crisis we have against this other Yakuza clan, etc., etc. And he's like, I just want to be with my adoptive daughter and our, like, my orphanage. So they're mm -hmm. like, Kiryu, we're going to take your plot of land and this convoluted plot to bring out an arms dealer organization uh, led by a guy who speaks actual English in a game where everyone speaks Japanese. And he's speaking English to Kiryu, and Kiryu's like, Nani. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> he's speaking, like, kind of accented English, but it's actually pretty clear. And he's like, Kiryu, he went to the roof. And he's like, <laughs> upstairs, you say. Like, I don't think they actually understand each other when they're talking to each other, but it's really funny. Um, I did like the story. I like the main antagonist. The gameplay was pretty jank, but I just, I, I had a lot of fun either way. And I'm actually pretty far into 4 already. I didn't get the Yakuza fatigue that sometimes happens. And I just jumped straight into 4, which is very different because it's got, like, four protagonists. I think you don't even see Kiryu till the last fourth of the game in that Ooh. one. So it's are pretty interesting. Are you making your way slowly up to Like a Dragon? Or are you going to jump to uh, Like a Dragon? What I've also mean? started Like a Dragon. Um, okay. And I finished Chapter 1. And then I was like, let me beat 4... Because I got spoiled on a boss fight that happens midway through the game. And I was like, well, I know that character gets properly introduced in 4. So let me actually do this. Uh, also, 7 apparently has huge like, huge uh, spoilers for stuff that happens in previous ones that I didn't realize when I started. Anyways, that that's my Yakuza journey. Yes, Tyler, you. One, um, I didn't know my elbow bent that way. Yeah, that's, that's gross. Really that's really that's gross. gross. Uh, two, 
Uh, do I need to play the other Yakuza games to play Like a Dragon? No. Uh, you can go in blind. Uh, the only thing that uh, might hinder you is you might not know, like, some of the characters that show up maybe in the late game. I'm only in Chapter 1, but they're, they're going to be a minor part of the story, and you'll be fine either way. Um, like, it is in the same universe, and it will spoil, like, the state of the Tojo clan... Uh, if if you're interested in that plot line, which I sort of am, because should I watch like a four hour long everything up to you who's a like a dragon video? Oh uh, yeah, actually, that sounds good. Uh, that that'll do it. Thanks to someone for whoever made that because yeah, thank- I know it exists. <laughs> Thanks in advance, bro. At, yeah, I I found one for Devil May Cry. You can find one for Yakuza. Uh, I mean, uh, Yakuza is a much <laughs> more in depth story than Devil May Cry. Um. <laughs> Also, there's also the spin-off Judgment series, which is fucking excellent. Judgment 1, I talked about on the podcast, has such mm-hmm. a good story and so much fun side content. Um, and Judgment 2 is coming out, so I'm looking forward to that. All right, that's my spiel. Um, since Joe in here, I'll go. I'll let Joe say this for last because he's probably got a lot. Um, yeah. That time I got reincarnated as a slime, part 2, season 3 started. Let's go. Ooh, slime shit. Good. Dude, so... I really am enjoying this show because it's starting to turn into a lot of politics anime. (laughs) Um, Slime politics, yes. Yeah, it's great. Um, And that's something I really liked about um, uh, Log Horizon. But Log Horizon still has that early 2000s like MMO anime aspect of it that is just... Ooh, you can't get that type of like weeb anymore. Jesus. I've watched the beginning of Log Horizon, uh, the first few episodes off of your recommendation. I, I still think it's good. I, did, I didn't absolutely hate it, which is the highest praise I can give in Isekai. That's a good, th- that's a high rating right there. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and then I've been I've been scouting Boruto. <laughs> like, I've been poking like the pig here and there and I'm like you look bad. I bet you taste bad too. You, I mean, you've watched a bunch of Boruto. I you, did. I, I watched like I think I watched almost half of what currently exists of it. You should have an opinion um, at this point instead of saying like yeah, you look bad. I, I I've watched uh, like a hundred episodes up to the Steam Ninja arc, which is like a. They started doing the Black Clover thing where it's like it's not filler but half the episode is filler uh, where it just doesn't really get to the point ever and it's really annoying and it's uh i don't i don't want to watch it they're finally introduced like the actual main character of uh of boruto which is like his brother it's like his adopted naruto's adopted son yeah the, the edgy looking one yeah yeah he's finally in the story now they're fighting um madara Mo- yeah, they're fighting more moon people, um, and then Jiraiya isn't in the show yet, so it's way behind the manga. Um, so it, it, it's not something I really want to catch up on, but Macadamia Nut Cookie anime is going on right now, too. Uh, some people call it Boku no Hero Macadamia, Academia. I've always um, gone with Boku no Pico de Gallo. Myself. Boku no Pico de Gallo is good. I go with Macadamia Nut Cookie. Okay, that's good. And, and it's just like, you know, I like I I call it Green Naruto. Um, <laughs> I so Kelly really enjoys My Hero Academia. Um, it's a show I watch, and it's not like it's not bad in any aspect. Um, I enjoy it when it's on because it is something good to watch. I don't think this show is that good. I and listen, fun uh, on a side note. I've been thinking that we need to revisit our anime tier list. Uh, we're going to use the same tier list, but move some stuff around and add new things we've seen. Because I just need to put Jujutsu <laughs> Kaisen and, and knock... Uh, first of all, I need to knock Attack on Titan out of five. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, what if the anime ends differently? Uh, <laughs> man, that I'm never going to forget that last chapter. Uh, it's still fu- it's still a fine manga, but... um. We, we have this... Uh, that's that's We have until the end of this year. That's when it's going to end, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll get to that later, but um, Boku no Hero, the Green Naruto, is, is okay, and you're about to get to the point in the anime where 
where I got disillusioned with the series because of kind of a jumping the shark moment, and then the big war arc starts. And the yeah, way... it's it's leading up to that now. The way the the villains of the war arc are fantastic. Actually, there's an arc focused on the villains, and it's really really good. Like actually, we're like... We're, we're building up to that, and like a lot of the episodes right now are about Hawks. Oh, Hawks is great. He um... is, but here's here's why I'm not like I don't like the anime is. And I probably wouldn't like this part in the manga either. Is let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have twenty. No, we have sixteen episodes that have happened this season, and let's see, eleven of them were this classroom arc where Class A and B. I and... hate that. Oh, so you've already got past the jumping the shark moment. Yeah. Yeah, like, that, I hated this. I that's, was like, this that's is That's the this most is boring arc, and also it gives Deku his new, nine new powers, um, which I really don't like. I mean, they only, yeah, they're like, oh, here's one, you're gonna get uh Here's six, one, you'll get nine and, over time. Yeah, and, and I, I just, it was so boring, I hated it. This, yeah, like, I, that's an entire waste of a season. Cool. Um, the next arc actually re is actually really good, and then the war arc. I think a lot of people agree ends really weak, um, but I mean you'll you'll see when you get there in a couple of years. Look, I don't care. The only anime I want to come back right now is Haikyuu. That's all I have left. Oh in my life god! Is Haikyuu? I think I need so, to start watching Haikyuu to fill that hole in my heart because Haikyuu is so good. <laughs> so I have Haikyuu to end. Slime might potentially end. Sword Art Online ended. Attack on Titan's um, ending. Attack on Titan ends. And then I think once I'm done with all the anime I've been watching since I was like 13 or 14, I might settle down and have a kid. <laughs> you have not been watching the these since 13. You weren't 13 when you were watching these. I started watching Sword Art when I was like 14 or 15. I guess, I guess. Hey, part eight's, part six is coming out soon, Attack on so. Titan I started watching when I was like 14. Titan Titan came out when my first we year were in college. college. We were in college, yeah, homie. I was in seven, I was seventeen. <laughs> I, was, I, was, yeah, I, was, I was in high school. My bad. Four years off. Anyways, Joe, what do you got? You got some cool stuff going on. I do. Fuck. Uh, um, I've been watching Jujutsu Kaisen again, just kind of putting oh it to the side. Thank God. Um, I, I'm at the. I've. I've. I got to the point now. Um, for the first few episodes, I'm like this is pretty good. And then we get to the point where your our main character splits off with the rest of the party for a little bit, and I was like, "Oh, things are starting to get really interesting." That's a funny meme. Uh, wait, then... wait, did you not finish it the first time? No, no. Uh! I... What do you mean, uh! Tyler? 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 Music made him lose control. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I finished that episode before I saw that meme, so that that's fine. Um. So I've been doing that. I've been on a rom-com kick, so I'm just kind of slowly going my way through rom-coms and watching them. Uh, uh, doing Oathbringer, I had an yeah. entire week of interviews, which was wild uh, for a job that I just like accepted two days ago. Yeah! Uh, if you've been following the recruiter. podcast and... Picked up yeah. on picked up on subtle hints. Joe's been looking for a job for a while. Um, for so. about two years, Grant. Like, I mean, you were a, year a student. Has it been two years since you graduated? Shut up. No, no it's it, been like one year since you graduated. Oh my, you're but you're no, like making me palpitate. No, it's been it's been three months since I finished my master's. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was like, Jesus Christ, what happened? I, I, I two years since I'm looking for a big boy job from like after a bit lost and whatever um let's see but like i had that going on i got a playstation 5 finally twice <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> thank you will and cole. you should also thank Not... bradley because he hired cole we all we all did this yeah. together and, and tyler yes, helped somehow too <laughs> yeah moral support yeah. oh i helped by buying a second controller so now joe has yeah controller. I buy. Yeah. The, I bought him a second controller. Yeah, but you were gonna give it to me, and I said no. Hold on to it until <laughs> Joe gets a PS Five. That's because he bought one that week. <laughs> Anyways, that's Anyways. more helping by association than uh, doing nothing. So I got that going on. Uh, I, there was a, another show I was watching. I cannot, oh, I'm in the middle of B Star season two as well. Yeah. Fuck you. Uh, 
Uh, Why would you do season, this? Season two, more enjoyable than season one. It's still mm. furry porn. Um, yeah, it like is. It's, it's just one hundred percent. Like Joe is just exploring. Okay, was like, it's furry porn. Anyway, I just started well, season two. <laughs> I okay, so like before I started to shoot Kaizen again, I was just like, I need something to put on the side while I was playing Warhammer. Also, the last Warhammer DC DLC came out this week, so that was another thing that happened. Um, so we uh, so like I put it onto the side while I was playing that game, and I was like, you know, we're doing we're doing a good plot here, we're doing some good things, and then I look over and there's some gay shit happening on the side. I'm like, mm, I don't like this. Y'all, did I ever talk about the hidden dungeon only I can enter? Yes, I also watched three episodes of that. I was like, nah. It's supposed Dude, to be the most you, perverted show You ever. should finish that. Like, like, stop watching Beastars and just finish the, Fair. the horny that, dungeon that's, anime. That's actually, like, porn I would enjoy. Or you want real porn, go watch Gong Kamui. Ah, true. Fair. Oh, that, that's the manliest men porn. I've also been reading Don to Don whenever the chapter comes out. And they're always yeah. like... A, two weeks behind i gotta catch up uh, i don't know if these people even know uh these people being bradley and tyler but we covered dawn to dawn on this channel i <laughs> yeah a, you know what that's a thing I, we do i, I did know you, i guess you would because know. i make the thumbnails but i yeah. have it in two weeks so joe yeah. and will are about to crucify me no we were talking uh, about how much we hate you before this yeah uh but i think we're like one chapter away of finishing the second arc willer uh um, okay cool so yeah. Uh, if but, I find and, time this weekend, I'll get back on it. But next weekend, for sure, by, for sure, hold me to it. I'll, yeah. I'll catch up. That that uh, that series super fucking cute. It's yeah. so good. I it's, think Bradley would really the like romance it. element is super good, but the the art is fantastic. The action's mm-hmm. cool. That that is such a good series. Yeah, I uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I really hope it sticks around for a while because is, is, is Turbo <laughs> Granny still trying to eat dicks or whatever? <laughs> Turbo <laughs> Gary got parts to play. Don't nice. worry about it. Very nice. Um, but uh, I think Bradley should check it out. I think he would enjoy it. I think Tyler would enjoy it once it becomes an anime. Uh, I, I started watching. Um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, what? What? Is, no. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Uh, no. uh, I'm no. trying to think what else there is. I think all the other stuff we're going to talk about, but in like the games that we have. I'm playing right now. We've already talked about on the podcast. And uh, so. in uh, two small new segments, uh, new Strive DLC got announced. Uh, yeah. Gold, gold, gold Wiener, Gold Member. Gold, gold, American. Gold, Golden Lewis Dixon. Yeah, Gold Dick. Um, Fat American. I, I, I don't know if any of us are looking to play him, but he's got that one move that's getting memed because he has one move that has eight variants, and it is the most yeah. obnoxious thing I've ever seen on, like – Willer, it's the it's the half circle down variant. How did you know that? <laughs> but left or right, Tyler. It, but it's, no, it's the it's half not circle only... <laughs> forward down is variant. It, is it clockwards up or clockwards down or counterclockwards down on the left or right hand side or fuck, on the vertical? Fuck number notation. Down. We're using clock notation. It's a <laughs> it's a it's a three to a three to six motion. <laughs> Willer, it, it's so simple. If you can tell, if you can time frames. From slow dolphin to fast dolphin, you'll have no problem. Oh, with clock I'm gonna be able, no, I'm gonna be able to do all those moves. I'm just not gonna play this guy. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm playing May. <laughs> this guy's obnoxious. I I love it that he has one move that does eight things. Does he not have any other specials? He has, he has two more specials. One of them is r- drone. The other one is gun. Um, so he's got the most. Spe- he's got by far the most specials out of anyone. Uh, yeah, definitely. and then the the second batch of news is uh, the next time you hear me, I will be a changed man because I've been waiting Aww. since I was roughly fourteen. Um, <laughs> for the world ends with you sequel, I don't know what time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for Willer's gonna lose his virginity. Oh shut yeah. up! I've <laughs> lost it so many times. You don't even know, bro. Um, wait, what? He lost it. He got it back, and he lost it. Again. I, 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 like, wait, is there a way to get it back? That I'm missing. Like, you, you gotta, gotta you gotta talk to, to the right priests, and they'll like reinstate you into virginity. I know a guy. Oh shit! Am I missing out on Christianity? No, you, no, no you're fine. Um, you're fine. 
And, uh, but yeah, and also a new Ace Attorney, which I've been waiting for since 2016. I am actually mm -hmm. not just one Ace Attorney. I'm getting two fucking games two. On, 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 on the 27th. So I get both of those games on the same day, and that is the highlight of my gaming year. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. Those are only on Switch, right? Uh, no. I, okay. I, I bought The World Ends With You on the PS4, and I'm probably getting... I don't know where I'm getting the greatest attorney. Yet. I think, I mean, on PS4. Do you mean PS5? No, I got on PS4. It's a, there he means no... PS4, and he's gonna play it through his PS5 yes. on his okay. PS5. Is it PS4 or only game? Interesting. Yeah, I think so. Um, I could be wrong. My version says PS4. I think it's a PS4 only game. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's a Unity game, so they probably don't even have support for PS5 yet. I don't think. Oh. Uh, or at least the version that they built on. All right, let's get into some topics. So. <laughs> We got Loki, and I think Bradley's planning on watching Loki. So we're gonna I'm do. One hundred percent gonna watch it. Just, probably this next week. What is spoiler-free Loki then? I think. Wait, since when does Bradley care about spoilers? Oh, uh, I, I mean. Well, so I like to get spoiled on something if I've already tried it and hated it. But if I haven't tried it yet, then I'll try to avoid it. Yeah. Okay. That that's been the been the uh, yeah. the I'm mo. Not making sure. Uh, yeah. we, I mean, we can make him step out for a quick pee break and get some stuff I, out if we need. I <laughs> would love to sh piss and maybe shit even. Okay. Yeah. Go okay. ahead. Leave. So okay. how about? No, hold on. How about you sit through a very quick, like, spoiler-free okay, okay. review, and then we let you shit and then pee and maybe even a third thing if you want. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Loki's the new Marvel show. It wrapped up like last week. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like. We have been in like phase. What what was the phase that like in game and Spider Man three the last five, three? I feel like we've been in phase three point five. Nah, for a long time. Uh, I, then, I I think we are in phase four full stop. I I feel like Loki at the end of it was like, oh, we are we are getting full into now what the next stage of Marvel is. This isn't a One Piece starts at Alabasta situation, Joe. I think it's, I think <laughs> as of WandaVision, we've been in phase four because all of these shows have very important mm -hmm. plot points. Did y'all see that video I sent you about those two scenes timed together? I did, yeah. That's, that's pretty interesting and seems pretty intentional. Uh, mm -hmm. Loki is the story of Loki. Um, Yo. And that's all, folks. And he is the villain from the Thor movies and... Tom Hiddleston plays him, and he's joined the Onesler and Sands in a very exclusive club <laughs> that we will mention later. Uh, that, that is very funny to me, especially because I now know who the Onesler is, and I am deeply invested in him. Oh, uh, man, the best. <laughs> thank you, Bradley, for that one. Um, like, what did y'all think about it overall? I feel like we might be the most negative people on this show that I've seen in the entire no internet. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think I like the show from a world building, universal building standpoint. I think the show does a really goes fucking crazy in where we're going with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But from a personal level of like the characters that we are with, I didn't enjoy it as much as like Falcon and Winter Soldier and WandaVision. Like I it didn't feel like Loki went through as much as a an elemental story or change. Like there was there but it definitely ends with just, like, we're, there's more to be told here. I have a different take. Where I think he goes through a lot of character development, <clears throat> I just think the meme, the, the memes, the themes uh, were, <laughs> were, like, there's, I think there's two main themes that goes with this show. And the way that they weave themselves into the narrative and weave themselves into each other is not very <laughs> fluid or enjoyable. <laughs> To where the first three episodes felt like a different thing, and then episode four and five start bringing back like the theme that was set in episode one, and then episode six has a different theme that kind of ties into the first theme, but like they never really did the legwork to really make it work for me personally. And like I liked all the characters, um, I didn't. I I thought the action scenes were mostly not great, but that's kind of been a thing with uh, like I... everything. But Falcon and Winter Soldier has good action scenes, but WandaVision and uh, this show do not. Um, I'm I'm not a choreographer of action by any means, but I think the choreography looked like shit. There's this scene in episode two where Loki fights some people in like a convenience <laughs> yeah, store. Spoiler. That I mean, I, I, wow, this is the greatest spoiler. Loki. Oh, in the convenience store, right? 
<laughs> yes, Tyler. It was, it's your dud being but, pedantic. Um, did, did that not have the worst cuts of all time? Like, it made me queasy. <laughs> but, yeah, that's just, like, there was a cool, like, set piece action scene in, like, episode three or so. Um, I really like the character of, I think it's Sylvie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think we can, like, all agree that's kind of, like, a standout character of the show. She was very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. I liked Mobius. Mobius. I, like Mobius is, too. I, I think everyone also likes Mobius. Um, I hate Mobius. No, you. No, you, you love you Mobius. You I know. know. I'm, sh I, I'm sure I do. <laughs> yeah. Owen oh, Wilson, like he's always. I love seeing him just do whatever he wants, and wow. he's just playing Owen Wilson. <laughs> and I was just no. Like, he had some serious scenes as well. He I was like, hey man, you're selling it. You're, you're really selling yeah. it. And, and it, like, I think of all of the people. It, that shows up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Owen Wilson to me is the one that has kind of stood out the most as like a celebrity actor. I don't know why. I I um, don't know about that. Like, but be Benedict Cumberbun. Like, true. Yeah. But uh. But like, he, but like Owen Wilson, I just see him in such like regular ass movies. Like, or I said regular ass, but like uh, <laughs> uh, like Grand Budapest or like uh, kind of a Sanderson movie. Because in a lot of those, I uh, there's two uh, characters in in the MCU that take me out of the movie, and I was like, oh my god, that's a cameo. One is Abed, Danny Pudi in fucking <laughs> Winter Soldier, I think. Soldier, uh, yeah. Which was like, what Abed? And the second is Pillboy in this show. <laughs> I was just like, what is Pillboy doing here, dead ass? Yeah, yeah. Also, there was a really annoying joke, and, like, the humor kind of, like, was hit and miss for me also. That might be why, like, the first three episodes didn't mesh very well, where, like, Pillboy is like, what's a fish? And then if you think about it, that is a really dumb joke that is just there to be like, haha, funny, but then it's like, wait, that's really world-breaking. Like, I don't know if that holds up, because they have a cafeteria where they're drinking milk and eating salads. Like, okay, you don't yeah. know what a fucking fish is, dude? Maybe they don't serve fish in the cafeteria. Uh, I'm not maybe, buying it. maybe they don't have a source of water, but they have salads all the time. And water is needed to survive. Anyways, uh, I guess we won't need a spoiler section. I, I will just say that, like, the sixth episode was very weird because on paper that is the most boring episode of television. But mm -hmm. I was just on the edge of my seat. I was like, "What the Same. fuck is happening?" Thing. It was one of it was the best conversation in the MCU. Um, yeah, that that was featured in that episode, and um, it got me like the whole show was like what a two point five three out of five for me. Um, mm -hmm. but that last episode got me so excited for the future. This is the most excited I've been about the MCU, like even mm -hmm. including Thanos stuff because like, uh, Shit. Infinity War got me super excited for Endgame, but that's pretty late into the series, you know, to like. Yeah. Realize, mm -hmm. oh wow, I'm actually really invested in, in this universe. Like Infinity War really makes you realize, mm -hmm. um, the ending of Loki hit that same note where it's like, oh, this universe is about to get so cool. Oh, yeah. I'm ready. I'm yeah, ready. no, yeah. I, I think you'll like it as well, Bradley. Like I, very, I think... they set up, they set up the next big bad, and I think he's cooler than Thanos. Uh, at oh least my god, the way the way he's set up for sure. Yeah. I, I think it's gonna also, be the juggernaut. He's the new main man. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. Uh, I think also Kevin Feige mentioned that they're not doing a ten year saga again. Yeah. For this, okay. which will be nice. Yeah, yeah. I uh, bet we get like a, a a series of like six to eight movies that will wrap up this arc. And I'm like that. I'm cool mm -hmm. with that. Less filler yeah. in that. Like less Ant Man but ones. I I think this character that's big bad that's to get introduced is going to be a lot more involved than the last one. Yeah, I I, unlike Thanos who just shows up at the end of every movie it's like, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. Come get this, me. This, guy, this guy's set up to like, oh, you can actually affect every single person potentially. Tyler, did it get you excited or are you just like, meh, whatever, I'm Tyler? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, cool. I, 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 I don't know. I don't think I'm liking the hybrid model. Um... Mm. Maybe I'll feel something once again once the real Marvel content starts up again. I, mean, I this think is this is real the Marvel realest content. Marvel content. Yeah. Um. Once we get back to the real characters that actually matter, like Ooh. Spider Man. Okay. Doctor Strange. You know what? That's a fair. Co that's a fair complaint mm -hmm. because not everyone might be into Loki. Me personally, 
Mm -hmm. I'm more invested in the character of Captain America and his legacies and Bucky and Sam mm -hmm. than I am with Loki. I, personally. I like those. Um, it just I, I liked Captain I like uh Sam and uh Bucky Bucky. Yeah, Bucky, but the show wasn't that good. Yeah, no, like it, it's I, I did like it a little better. Um mm -hmm. Uh, which is, I think, is a hot take, and I like WandaVision better than both. Um, I, if I had watched, and here's my thing, I'm watching these in bulk all in one sitting. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not waiting six weeks to get all these at once, because I think... That's the thing, bullshit. I watched this one in bulk, and maybe that might have impacted me, but I might have been pissed at I, those first three episodes if I watched them back. I kind of wish for, for Loki I watched it all in bulk, because I, I really just, I really wasn't feeling like, uh connected or like really like tantalized to watch the next episode mm -hmm. every week like meanwhile new, like at least falcon and winter soldier had that episode four where you're like holy fucking shit what is happening yeah. next episode yeah so that was cool yeah that one had like a consistency to this this one had just... this one had episode five i'm sure that was really exciting to like f figure out what's going to happen next after five it would but the thing about five though like five like five and six feel like something like a part one and a part two of a yeah of a okay segment. yeah yeah they feel very disconnected actually from the rest as well Let's try. yeah yeah but i i think that but of all the shows loki's the one you need to watch for the rest yeah. of the marvel universe i mean depending on how that's connected to wandavision you probably also need to watch that um, which one yeah multiverse of madness is gonna be crazy and i'm yeah, excited i'm for so it. excited I, I, I am too and i don't know like so it did get you excited hmm no, I'm excited for Doctor Strange and Spider Man. I don't really give a shit about other content that's gonna happen. What about Damn Man? <laughs> that... I like Damn Man. I, I'm excited for the Ten Rings. Shang Chi. Yeah, no, that's that... Shang Chi. Yeah, Shang Chi. I'm, I'm not excited, excited for, for... The Eternals. I'm not excited for how that connects to the universe because he just seems like a dude. But I'm excited for the film itself. I am. I mm -hmm. want another dude. Give me another dude. I I have a theory. <laughs> I have a theory about that movie. Oh, uh, but I cannot talk about it right now because it's spoilers. Oh, okay. Well, it, it, yeah. it, it, it... email it to me at uh, so ro the do... roundaboutcast at gmail.com. The real exciting thing for Loki is, yeah, like y'all said earlier, sorry, I, I missed it. Um, <laughs> it. It does it does talk about, like, we do know who the next overarching villain is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, we, like, it wasn't introduced as that, but the multiverse allows them to be that, which is cool. Yeah. yeah uh let's move on to the next topic uh let bradley talk this time for about bradley movies as this topic is labeled because they're it's usually i do the movie block so i'm excited someone else is also taking the the movie block yeah uh it's uh, a few different anime movies i watched this past week um and i guess i'll just girlfriend Ugh, everyone yeah. pointed tease bradley <laughs> um but no we watched some very cute movies um the first one is called uh when marnie was there is oh. a t 2014 studio ghibli movie and uh i feel like i feel like most people if they've watched a studio ghibli movie it's one of the like early 2000s or earlier ones like yeah, spirited like, like, away or I is it fair to call them the classics? Because yeah, those they're definitely the classics. yeah. I didn't even know this movie was a Studio Ghibli film. I, I like yeah, yeah, and uh, came out in twenty fourteen. So uh, this is probably like the most modern Studio Ghibli film I've seen. And man, they still got it. Animation was amazing. Uh, great music. Uh, all the characters were very very cute, um, and the story's got some cool twists um it, it's one of these stories where um it's kind of almost like a puzzle figuring out what the story is mm. so it's fun to theorize as you go along the way and at the end you're like you get the moment where you're like ah oh, now i can watch this movie again and i'm like no blah 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 you know um, I, I kind of feel like that applies to every or like most ghibli films i've i've watched like i didn't really get it until you watch until you get to the ending it's like oh, okay this was the actual yeah. story so um yeah, I mean, it was a very, very cute movie. And then uh, the next one is called Weathering With You. It's made by the Your Name people, which I have not actually watched Your Name. But recommend. Uh, I thought this movie was fantastic. I think 
probably the most standout thing is the soundtrack. Holy fucking shit. Great soundtrack. Love the animation. Um, out of these three movies I'm talking about, it probably has the weakest plot. However, it probably has the most enjoyable characters. Uh, distinctly, I can remember three characters where they came on screen for the first time. They said their first sentence, and I was already like, oh, man, I love this character. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And the third movie was a sad fucking movie. It was called Ride Your Wave. Oh! Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, the animation style is very unique and very colorful and very pretty. And, uh, you know, like the other movies, animated really well. Great music. Like, there was once... The song that they constantly sing in this movie was stuck in my head for days afterward. Um, and, yeah, this was, like, the hardest I've sobbed at a movie in a few years. Aw. It, and it, it hit me fucking out of nowhere. Tyler, you watched this one, too? I have seen this movie, yes. Mm. Did you also cry? Uh, yeah, a little, a little, little bit. Yeah. You know little that bit. that goes a long way for a Tyler cry. We take those. Um, I, I'm torn. I kind of want to talk about the premise of this movie, I, but I, hmm. so so it's weird how like think about Big Hero Six, right? Okay. Um, to talk about the premise of the movie, you kind of have to explain Hero's brother dying. Yes. Which is like a big deal in the movie, but it's also in the first thirty minutes. So is it really a spoiler? Yeah, similar with Up. I, well, you could skip that, I guess, with Up, but... Don't spoil it. Okay, I won't spoil it. Really? But mm. the, like, the premise in and of itself is like, oh, man, this is going to be a depressing-ass motherfucking story. Could you spoil it for me, pretty yeah. please? This might be one of those where it interests me if you do. Okay. I yeah, went it, in completely blind on this movie. Yeah. So if I you, didn't see it at all. If you want to go in completely blind, skip forward, like, 45 seconds. But basically... There's this girl, super beautiful and cute, and she meets a super beautiful and cute guy, and they are both fucking fantastic. You watch them go on a bunch of dates. It's very cute. Uh, the guy ends up drowning trying to save someone, Oof. and she is heartbroken. You see her go through the stages of grief, and then she discovers she can summon him in a body of water anytime she sings their favorite song together. And it quickly turns very dark because Ooh. she's using this as a coping mechanism. And this is like her actual dead boyfriend's mind in here. And he's like, I don't I don't know if this is good for you to be doing this. And uh, it gets very sad. <laughs> that's that there's a Black Mirror episode with that premise, more or less. Yeah. Um, and that's always a good premise. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I would recommend watching all three of these uh the order and i think like i'd probably give the highest score to ride your wave then when marnie was there and then weathering with you mm. but i think they're all fantastic i i liked your name so i might check out uh weathering with you uh i think you will really like uh your name as well yeah yeah i'll say after you know, watching that now, I'm like, okay, I need to watch the other fucking. They, movies. they have a thing for romance story with supernatural like connection between the characters, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. Good, good, so, good yeah. movie block. A lot more wholesome than the movies I watch, where the priest finds a bomb vest and contemplates ending his life and killing people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I remember you describing <laughs> that movie, and I was like, God. Damn. Or Shia LaBeouf playing his dad as he abuses Shia LaBeouf. Uh, that one was really fun. <laughs> Wait, up. he is a dead shy of surprise. <laughs> Man. Uh, Tyler, why don't you tell us about a wholesome movie called Space Jam 2? They put come on a slam and welcome to the jam. Just like the 90s. So here's my thing. <laughs> this movie isn't all bad. It has some good moments. It has some bad moments. People were like, ew, they put Chungus in the movie? I mean, you and gotta. Like, really? And I'm like, I'm yeah. like awesome. yeah, they did. Yeah, why? Like, why wouldn't they? It's their meme. They made it. You didn't make Chungus. They made Chungus. What you just keep talking about. You women? popularized Chungus, but he was always there. So. I was yeah, born in like, the Chungus. Like they, you did. Nobody like on Twitter went and, like, hey, hey, I made Fat Bugs Bunny. <laughs> like, no, they made that. Um. 
I think it lacks potential that we could have utilized in the new era. Ooh. It's a lot more touchy about it's a it's a lot more about like LeBron and his son. So mm -hmm. it focuses a lot more on the son and like their overarching relationship than it does actually on the loony and the toony antics. Mm. I, well, okay. So me yeah. and Joe have a weird experience with this movie in which we didn't watch this movie. We watched also, someone watch this movie on YouTube. Also, uh, I took my headphones off to avoid spoilers and then no one told me we were talking about oh. Space Jam. So whatever. Um, oh, <laughs> Yeah, anyways, in Weathering With You, they they put Big Chungus in. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, look, look, I'm going to just say this. They have a recruiting part in the movie. That part? Where they go recruit their crew. When I was watching Marcus, Cosmonaut Marcus, watch that part, I was like, wait, is this movie actually fun? Because that part seems really fun, even though it's like, hey, look, we, uh, go, Brett. <laughs> we, um, look, we, uh, put this guy in a batman costume when we put this guy in a superman costume I mean, it still was like the humor of a looney tunes cartoon from what yeah. i can tell so that seems mm -hmm. pretty cool mm -hmm. it was all right and that's like my thing is like they did it's cool because of how much the warner universe has grown in the last 20 years 25 years mm -hmm. um but uh the main antagonist has a really good point about like so like you find out as soon as they get to the looney tune world that it's like only bugs bunny is left on looney tunes planet because it's like <laughs> the main bad guy he's like go explore the universe why don't y'all do that like y'all don't do anything anymore Damn. and it's like he's not wrong it's self-aware yeah. in a like this money is like a huge advertisement, but it's also self-aware of their mistreatment of the Looney Tunes. Mm. It's it's awkward in that it, way. It's a little meta in that yeah. sense. Yeah, but like the, it's, it's meta it's, in a way where it's like, well, but you can't poke fun at this. This is your fault. <laughs> yeah, but um, also like the, there's the scene like <laughs> there's the scene where like they're pitching LeBron James. I don't know if you're looking at this, but they're pitching about LeBron James being like inserted into all the different Waterboard yeah. properties. And it's just like, and LeBron's just like, this is a terrible fucking idea. And it's like, <laughs> it's yeah, like but then why'd y'all make the movie? It's so weird. Yeah. Like, they're being it meta was... about how shitty they themselves are. It's kind of awkward. It's yeah. really strange. Um, So, like I said, it, it has some good and it has some bad. Um, Like, you can tell they've kind of, like, censored some parts of themselves. Like, uh, uh, Speedy Gonzalez is in the movie, but he's only introduced and gets some quips in, and then he, <laughs> like, shows up at the very end after everything. Like, he doesn't actually play in the game. That, are his quips still his, like, old voice, or are they, like, Yeah, yeah, no, no, that? it's, it's, it's mm. still Speedy okay. Gonzalez, um, because he is not the, but, like, they don't actually utilize him in any ways that would be racially to profiled, be fair, except, his, <laughs> except his voice. To be fair, um, I like the Flash TV show, the season I watched, but when you're making a TV show like that, writers get lazy. It's like, well, he has super speed, so he could just solve everything. So that's probably why <laughs> um, they just wrote Speedy Gonzalez out of the, out of the whole thing. I, I think what it lacks for me is antagonist motivation. And I think that's what actually makes the movie not too good. Is in like, if I'm actually going to talk and critique Space Jam, a kid's movie. Um, <laughs> Do it, bitch. Like, like, we have these cute bad guy characters in the first movie that get bullied into their bad guy positions. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's cute. It's fun. It's antic. We see the bad guys at the very beginning. We witness their hardships and like, why are they struggle? We get it's some little... Like, we get the build-up for that power-up. And in this movie, the build-up is with the Looney Tunes characters. And, like... Why is that not... That seems better. Because... They, get, they do Final just, Fantasy summons in the end, right? That's even cool. It's just nostalgia bait. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... I mean... Okay, but you say this as if Space Jam 1 wasn't the same thing, you know? Like, it was on a smaller scale because... It, it, they... it was. And I, like, I was thinking... I was like, man, they have a lot of stuff in the crowd. But so did all this stuff, like... In Space Jam 1, they had a lot of proud stuff in it, too. 
like a lot of like Warner Brothers characters in it. I will say Pennywise I, chilling in the crowd with White Walkers seems absurd oh, to me. <laughs> so weird. Like the extras are so weird at acting at these characters. Like they have. If they, <laughs> if they actually acted the way their characters acted, it would be so much better. Like Pennywise is like sitting on the crowd, like clapping, like cheering people on, and I'm they like, have the, oh, dude, the director, the, cl- the Clockwork Orange dudes. Yeah, they're I'm rapists. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm like director. You could have just literally told him that character to, to just stand there and stare directly yeah, into yeah, the camera. Yeah, that would have no been matter better. where it went. And it's simple things like that that make mm-hmm. it feel like they don't it, care, and it, it was just nostalgia based. It seems like the game's a little fluffy this time, but I also don't remember how the match goes in the original one. But I remember it being a little more basketball y. The, 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 in the original one, they follow basketball rules but like to be fair they're yeah. playing a video game yeah. this time they're playing the kids like yeah and that's not bad either i think it's a cool change like they try to modernize it a lot and i don't think it's cringy um i don't think it's really that bad i think it's a fun movie i hope kids really enjoy it i, I think kids would for. love this it's awesome um, kids movie so yeah. it's like uh, like if if y'all want a spoiler for it uh, Rick and Morty are in it. Oh, I saw that yeah. scene. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, oh, that's fun. That's weird to think that they own that far down the ladder. But then that yeah. makes sense because Warner Brothers, Scooby Doo, yeah. Hanna Barbera, yeah. like wow. that yeah. makes sense. It was a Rick and Morty scene without obscene swearing or someone's was... guts being ripped out. So I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. that, that was weird. <laughs> that was weird. I was gonna say, I feel like they should have taken that scene and just like bleeped every other word. Um, <laughs> I think that adds the rating up. And then kids uh, would fair. grow up being like, wow, Rick and Morty seems so edgy. I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> and then they I mean, watch the fucking yeah. Dragon episode. They're like, this this is what you boomers were into? Okay. <laughs> like, the Justice League is in it. That's neat. I think it would have been cool to have seen Harry Potter in it in some aspect. But yeah. Because they be- couldn't get any of them. Mm. That um, cool. Like, there are no Harry... Like, they reference Harry Potter, but there are zero characters from Harry Potter in this show. Like, they were not about to pay what it required to get any of those characters yeah. in it. That's fine. Um, I like the Michael B. Jordan joke. That that's that good. was a good joke. <laughs> like, Come here's on! The, here's the thing, though. As soon as he said it, I was like, oh, Michael B. Jordan oh, damn. in this movie. That's cool. And then, and then I go, oh, wait, this is the replacement for Bill Murray showing up? No. Absolutely <laughs> not for Space, Space Jam is superior. Uh... I mean, that seems like a stretch to say it's it's like the, the same caliber of, of cameo, but yeah, fair Here, enough. Okay, I, I, here's my take. It's not a bad movie. Enjoy it. It's obviously hype enough. It's got the marketing. Watch it on HBO, pirate it. I don't really give a fuck. Um, I'm, I'm going to say first one is better, and I never liked the first Space Jam all too much, mm-hmm. but I think it's on the whole better. It captures moments with characters, I think, a lot more accurately. LeBron seems like a much better actor than Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Like Le- LeBron actually seems decent Le- in this. I wish you could put LeBron in Space Jam 1. Mm. I just think the story is overall better. I don't think Michael Jordan yeah. is better at acting than LeBron James. Like, yeah. take LeBron and his family's problems and kind of, like, take the bad guys and the plot mm. with the Looney Tunes from 1 to 2, and I... I, I just like that a lot more. I, I did like the 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 idea of like the father disconnect and kind of understanding that yeah. what his son is prideful in is not the same as that he's proud in or wants to accomplish. I'm like that's a good kind of thing. I don't know how you integrate that into a basketball game, but hey, um, maybe maybe I'm just old now and here's my to, final take to be fair you're They're talking about the same you're talking to yeah, people same. who watched a 30 minute video where someone was watching this movie so we don't know what we're talking about like I, i'd say they're probably the same quality um, I, that's the other thing too is that yeah oh, i would say here, here is the thing okay final verdict final final yeah let's get out of this we're, we've yes. been in this for too long and i will say this is actually the worst part of the movie no kids will have wet dreams about Lola Bunny. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if no, no, ki- no, no, no kids not, is a stretch. You forget how sexually charged that introduction let me, to Lola Bunny Let me Bunny bring up the Lola Bunny introduction one. Like, that scene, it's like she walks in, she's strutting, she flicks her hair over, and she's like, 
what bug <laughs> and and but i do like this character though for girls in space jam 2 i think it's really cool because like when we're introduced to lola she's like doing the amazon wonder woman test yeah and she like passes so she's an amazonian and i'm like oh that's really cool power to her but you know for the boys we're missing out a little bit well, we, we, we got fucking daffy duck that's fine yeah we, we get daffy and we get notorious pig like i'm sorry lola's a better character lola's probably the best character in space jam and she's empowered in this one but she's sexy in the first one so the and first i don't one's know better. <laughs> I, i'm bad in sexist because i'm objectifying her but also proud of her for being an amazonian so i think you balance out to an okay guy tyler uh, let's move on. That's not for us to decide. <laughs> um, I, uh, let me talk about this guy of six real quick. Oh, uh, our call will end in five minutes. Never mind. Go, yeah, pee, pee break, everyone. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, we're back. By the way, I watched that Lola Bunny scene. She I right. <laughs> Bradley didn't say what he thinks of Lola Bunny. This is, I think everyone's Man. interested. Man. <laughs> You know, that, my, why does my opinion matter? <laughs> All right, Riley. Lola Bunny or Carrot? Oh, Carrot. Oh, yeah. oh interesting. Interesting. Controversial. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, anyways, let me go on a quick spiel about this guy of six. Uh, it came out yeah. a couple weeks back. I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy it, but it came out on a slight sale, and I had some Nintendo coins. I said I... This guy is one of my favorite franchises on like a pure gameplay level, so I gotta figure out what's going on. So I downloaded it, and this is a really tough game for me to talk about because like, this guy of five is the ultimate video game, video game ass game. It's like this RPG that they made to be as complex and deep as possible with all these subsystems that feed into each other and you just get down this rabbit hole for hours and hours and it's incredibly fun and there's nothing really like it um and the story is like the stories are never particularly good in a disguise game but you do become attached to the characters they got cute designs they got good voice acting they got like pretty fun gimmicks here and there right um so for me it's mostly a gameplay thing and i do play through the story and pay attention to all that uh, and then this guy of six comes out, and the first thing you'll notice about this guy of six, if you look at it, is the new art style, where they went from these very gorgeous HD uh, sprites to 3D models. That the models themselves, if they're standing still, look pretty freaking great. They're a cute art style. But then they move. But then they move, and everything falls apart. I went on this rant about battle animations and how upset I was because, like. The battle animations in Disgaea 6 are probably what's killing it the most for me. Um, where in Dis Disgaea 5 has some of the coolest attack animations. They're either incredibly badass, incredibly over the top, or incredibly creative and cute. Uh, where, like, there's this animation where you equip a cat girl as your mittens, right? Bear with me. And then you, you, she's your weapon now. And then you, she becomes a cat girl again. And you each wield one of the giant mittens. And then you play racquetball with an enemy on a wall so you're smacking him back and forth on a wall and it's leaving like a little imprint of the character sprite it's super creative and super cute and then there's attacks where you just destroy galaxies and like big epic strikes and it feels great something um, willer has never told us about hentai uh, i mean this guy or the hentai little action sequences Oh, that's not... Okay, okay, all right. Willer's never told us how horny this game is. No, there's one horny aspect of this Gaia games, and it's each game has a windscreen where it's the female characters at the hot springs, okay? Yeah. Okay, what about the move where she pole dances? Oh, yeah, okay. The... <laughs> <laughs> and then her clothes come off. You're right, but you don't see nothing, all right? It's cool, it's fine. Yeah, but again, she's the... horny. That's the succubus class. Of course she's going to be horny. Anyways, um... Hey, we haven't talked about it. It's true, it never came up, I suppose. But there's also other things they changed, like... They simplified a lot of the classes, there's way fewer classes, there's like half the classes is five, mm. um, and I really like having just a shit ton of units that I like... I will, I will rotate who I'm using at the time and who I'm leveling up at the time, it's very addicting with that. Um, the classes are, they feel really unique from each other, but they learn way less skills as well. It's just a big bummer. 
um, they did consolidate a lot of the subsystems into pretty smart systems that I'm into. They also added a customize a character's AI and auto battle, um, which is super cool because they pretty much give you a node editor for the AI of a character and you get to customize what they do in certain situations. Super fun. Um, gonna be really cool for like running the item world or like grinding a certain map a couple of times and just letting it run. But it's just distinctly different from five in that way. The story's been pretty solid so far, I guess. Like I nothing I like the characters. Um But like it I, I haven't mentioned it yet, but it runs like shit. I let this play out for Joe. <laughs> it yeah. looks so bad. There's a graphics mode, a performance mode, and a balance mode. I play on the balance mode where the models look okay, but it still runs pretty choppy. In the performance mode, it'll run, like, at a steady 30, I think, or maybe 60. I think it's 30. But the it, models get so blurry. Yeah, you can't... You, you, they look like pixelated sprites on a Game Boy. And you're yeah. just like, oh, well... Ugh. And then you can run the graphics mode, and the game <laughs> runs so bad. I it will say, like a slug. during the attack animations, which, I might, might I add, I have not run into a single attack animation that I think is on par with any of the Disgaea 5 animations, uh, the models look great. They, But the thing is, they every time you do a skill and you watch the skill animation, because a lot of the time in this guy you're skipping the skill animations to get through the map, but eventually you'll turn it on just to be reminded how cool the skills are. Um, every time, like... You do a skill, you get teleported to a, this little other screen, and then mm -hmm. they do the animations, and they're slow and stilted, and it's just not a good time. It's like, it fades to black for, like, a, a second. Five seconds or something like it's that. Like, it's not then... five, but it is, like, it does kill the pace. Yeah. Whereas, like, the Sky 5, because I've played it before, it is, like, boom, 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 boom. Like, the, you see, like, the flashes of the character, like, faces, and then they're in the sky riding on top of each other, about to do a meteor strike onto this dude. Um, but yeah. Uh, hold on. Yes, let me... No, no, no. Are we, though? Like, have we been? I, I'm recording now, yes. What's up? Okay, just making sure. Anyways, we're just handling a mic thing. Uh, yeah, that's this guy of six. I'm definitely gonna keep playing it. Uh, but what this game actually did was make me go and play, like, an extra eight to ten hours of five. <laughs> um, and just, like, five is a game I'll always come back to. And this is one where... I, I do need to get to the post game, and it's going to be kind of tough because, as I mentioned, there's a lot of games coming out that I'm super excited for. Um, but maybe by the end of the year, I'll be at the post game so I can also judge that and place it accordingly in our very important game of the year talk, which is the official talk of all video games. Oh, we are too, we are less too than bad. Away. We have two hot competitors for game yeah. of the year already. I got some sleeper picks that you, you I that are gonna ups, usurp a so, lot of so your. So do I. Okay. All right. Let's, cool. We'll see when we get there. Uh, yes, we will. I can't wait. I always have so much fun doing this. Next up, we have Returnal. Uh, Joe, Again, you don't have for the fourth time. It's not Part the fourth one time. It's Returnal the first. Um, yeah, Joe's to, playing Returnal. You don't have to go through yeah. it uh, in, in depth because we talked about it, and yeah. you're not that far in. You only beat the first mm -hmm. boss. But you know what, Joe? Beating the first boss makes you better than a lot of players. I, like, <laughs> I, I took Willard's advice. It's like, get into a room and just don't do anything. Try to dodge attacks. Yeah. It, it, it worked. <laughs> yeah, because, like, like, you're, like, it's not that hard to dodge. It's people get caught up in the offense yeah. versus defense kind of mix, and... You can figure it out. I I had a revelation that I realized that like, I think fighting games just make you better overall in those types of games. Oh, this like, is why I'm better at video games than all of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like oh, with I the exception just... of League of Legends. Get off me. You, you know, you know when to like to actually like shoot and when to like be defensive. Um, but like yeah, I, like I walked into the first boss and I was like, I'm just gonna let the entire sequence of their attack pattern play out before I do oh, anything. No oh, nice. I'm glad, like, you put that advice to practice, like, fully. And That's cool. I was like, okay, cool. The one move that got me was, like, the, the B move, where it just shoots out, like, super quick. Oh, that's, like, was, the easiest one. I just yeah, jumped that. Yeah, I, I just, I was, I was not expecting it to, like, mm. come out that quick. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, because the, everything's been, like, balls. The one that would get that me point. back then was the teleport strike. Yeah, fuck that thing. <laughs> that thing's hitbox was crazy. Um... <laughs> But I've been really enjoying Returnal. I think, like, you, when you mentioned this the first time, it's the first, like, actual next-generation game. I 100% agree. Uh, this game uses the PlayStation 5 as much as possible. 
I yeah. think. Like it, it uses what a what a great you like early use yeah. of that console. Like it I was uses, super impressed. It uses the controller. It uses like the the haptic feedback with yeah. the guns and the alt fire. I'm like, oh my god, we have now four buttons on two buttons. Like, did you crazy. keep the alt fire? Because I get bummed out when people immediately turn it off and don't try I, to I try to keep it. I, I think it's yeah. a cool system. I I really the like alt it. Alt fire. Yeah, um, where you can hold it halfway to shoot normal and hold it full to shoot your alt fire. Yeah. Oh, who would turn that off? A lot of like a lot of streamers turn it off immediately. So. I... I to was, me, that was like, oh, this streamers is like... are also worse at the game than me. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, I'm not God Tyler who beat the game in like five runs off. Tyler is oh, actually fuck you. It's three. I had three. <laughs> oh, three. Whatever it was. Well, how many runs um, did it take you to beat Frank? Uh, probably like 15 or so. Hmm. Hmm. It took me 15 yeah. to beat the game. <laughs> Tyler I'm is much better at this game than me, I will say. <laughs> uh, I, I played way too much uh, Risk, Risk of Rain, too. I also went through like five runs in a row where I didn't get a single gun. It was weird. I don't know Joe, why you didn't that explore happened. good enough. Yeah. I literally went into every room. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Um, you Okay, like, I, I've gone and beat Frank with the pistol, hey, too. Like, Joe, it's not that bad. Have yeah. you done any of the house sequences? I've done one house sequence. Did you like no, it? No, you visited Dr. House. Let's go. Did, did you like the house sequence? I did like the house sequence. I like uh, it. I, it's like I, a little slice of PT in your in your action game. Yeah. A little, a little uh, bit of PT. A little bit of PT. PT. Something I really like about this game is the architecture. It's very H.R. Geiger alien. Oh, it is super, yeah. And I like, that's my jam. That's, I love to see it. Like, Alien's one of my favorite, like, movies ever. So, like, I was like, I wouldn't, I didn't see anything about Returnal. All I knew was, like, it's a roguelike, it's space space, and there's aliens and shit happening. You shut yourself up out of that pretty good, but also people yeah. don't really spoil, like, the, the big twist that happens with gameplay or anything like that. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I, like, I saw Returnal, like, its first trailer happen, and then I saw, and then I heard y'all talking about it, I was like, I'm not gonna watch any footage. I don't even play the game with y'all, because I think Keith and then you also may have offered one. Yeah, I was like, no, I, I'll play it. I was always on the club of wait till Joe plays it comfortably. I, I was yeah. with you, buddy. Willer told me to play it because it was roguelike, and I got drunk. I was like, I guess I'll get it. And then I'm like, yo, this is my probably my favorite fucking game ever. <laughs> it was, dude, me and Tyler would go on like, crazy like charlie from uh always sunny crazy rants and connecting dots about the lore it was really wheeler hard. and i went down the fucking rabbit hole and, I've, and I've yet to watch that the um a video really trying to break it down yet because actually i haven't done i keep i don't i can't get the six sun fragment i've been looking for a while actually i should go get it at some point uh i'll go get it so you feel the motivation to go so get it. For, yeah. the, for the glyphs um should I, I should probably get all the glyphs regardless. It is, there's not like a minimum I should get on each one or should be looking for. No, no, you'll get them over time. Yeah, don't, you'll get don't them. Stress okay. Um, I, I like the game, but like the, the architecture and everything about it like really sold me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to really enjoy this game because yeah. it was like, it's, it have was like you perfect. entered the second area? Because I, I, I was kind of like gotten... mind blown. I was like, wow, this is very different. I was very, very happy that the first area they chose was the first area and mm -hmm. not the second area yeah yeah that would have left a, a bad taste potentially but but as a second area that area is so cool yes man I, joe wait wait till you get to that one area mm -hmm. i'm not gonna say anything else but wait till you get to that one area oh my god wheeler knows what i'm talking I know. about to me, to me also still looks like Brina Tarth to me. I oh no, just, I think it. I think it is. I think it is that actress. Is it that actress? Yeah. Okay. I I felt like I was going insane. <laughs> um, I will say though, but fuck the tentacle corpses that come out when you record your corpses. Okay, <laughs> when I played that wasn't there yet. I need to go back. You actually, Joe, you're playing a harder Wait, version. They add new lore to the game. Uh, they fixed something that was broken when we were playing, like the the corpse run thing I was talking that's, about. See, oh, those yeah. are the things that killed me. Uh, that's probably why. Joe, is, Joe is playing a harder game because they've also yeah. capped the amount of damage augment you can get now mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Damage augment, like from uh, the old augments. Thing. Yeah. You, hmm. you you can't upgrade your damage as much. Um, but like maybe, has... maybe you don't get rocket launchers and shotguns as much either. I didn't get a single rocket launcher. Well, he hasn't unlocked it yet. You need to unlock yeah. it. Anyways, uh, yeah. that's but, Returnal. But, like, but so like, but that squid thing is invisible for the first three frames that like it comes out of the ground and it mm. shoots immediately at you. Oh you shit! Cannot, 
Yeah, so that I'd be like, it'd come out, and it's like, <laughs> there's your half your health. Like, <laughs> dude, dude, the dodge is longer than thir- three frames, man. But, but like, you. Well, he wasn't it, ready for the attack, is what he said. Yeah, because what happens is when you go to the corpse, it will either be a tentacle monster or it will be like a Vinge or whatever. Is there no visual, nope. no visual distinction to tell? There is no visual distinction. That's bad UX. Yeah. The you, one developer you have, that listens to our podcast who made return you have to bad go UX. Up, you scan the image. You follow. You have to follow the image. You can't just sit back and watch the image like go to its spot. You have to follow it to its corpse, and then it will decide whether or not what's the kill. I did check this you. out myself. Uh, there has to be a way to tell. There might be. When I played this game, it was really late at night too because I had just like finished setting up the game and got everything like installed. Yeah, and you're busy playing worse games. No, yeah, I let's was... let's talk about the second real next gen game because this game looks next gen as fuck. Ratchet yeah. and Clank, a rift yeah. to the future, rift to rift the apart. past, rift, rift apart. apart. Yeah. Oh man, Tyler, Tyler is such a fucking sour go, bitch. Go ahead, it's fine. I'm gonna just chill. <laughs> All uh, right, uh, don't spoil Clank... it for me, Joe, because I do plan on playing this game. Yeah, uh, yeah, Tyler yeah. has a a rough history with the company of Insomniac, and we'll just say <laughs> that. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, rift apart is, of course, the next installment of the Ratchet & Clank series. I'm a big fan of Ratchet & Clank. I played them all the way back in the PS2 era. Yeah, they're, okay. they're very Play fun them. games. They're not. They are, they're by no means, like, the craziest, best games ever, but they're always, like, yeah, super Yeah, they're, they're always fun. Um, right now, this game is sitting at, like, a, a six and a half mm. for me, I think. Why? Um, I've, I've almost beat the game. That's number one. I think the, I think it's relatively short. Yeah, it's, like, uh, it's supposed but, to be a 12-year. I'm glad for, for like, that, honestly. Yeah. For the main main campaign, but like I was, I was like, I want like because the last Rise and Clank game I played was about time or whatever yeah. it was, the time one. That one's a long fucking game. Yeah, that one's pretty long. And that's my favorite Rise and Clank. A crack in time, right? The third of the of sequel, the, the third sequel, yeah. Part of the future series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That game was that solid. Really it good. has it has a really good ending. Like it's yeah. actually like very sad, but also very like. I uh, I, I got halfway through that, um, but that was right before I got like a, a mm-hmm. bunch of PS4 games I was playing. So I, yeah, I never finished that one. It's it's uh it's one of my favorites. Um, but uh, like I I can remember that last segment of that game very clearly because I thought it was so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so like excited to play this again. The premise of it is that basically, Clay makes this thing called a Dimensionator to find um Ratchet's like race race because they went to a different dimension for some unknown reason uh dr nefarious shows up does evil shit and they cause like a rip in In, space yeah in time and shit um and they end up in a dimension where dr nefarious wins and like is the emperor man dr Um, nefarious is a good antagonist he's a good like fun character um so number one i think the combat in this game is really really fun and challenging yeah actually uh, I put it on, like, not the hardest difficulty, but, like, the second hardest one. Like, there's, like, five in total. I might do that as well, then. Can you change? Um, I don't know. I haven't mm. attempted to. Uh, but, like, uh, but like playing it, like, it's... I feel like I'm... Like, I have a rotation of, like, what I want to do to set up when I'm in a field of battle. Like, you have a topiary, like, thing that will stun enemies around it. And then while that's going out, I send out all the summons, and then I switch to, like the other gun that I want to use there yeah. so I can set myself up. So I feel like I'm constantly like moving and like setting myself up and like it's very devil man where I am. I mean that's Ratchet and Clank gameplay in a nutshell. Yeah. You're shuffling a bunch of weird weapons and, and mm-hmm. you're like you're ma- managing ammo because there's very few like ammo pickups. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like a time because you're just like throwing so much random shit at the enemies. Yeah. So it it's fun in that regard. Um and then there's also like equipment. There's a bunch of unlockables you can find and secret stuff you can yeah. do. I love all that shit. Good Metrovania kind of stuff in those games. Yeah, and I, I'm always like, I won't beat the main story, and then I will go back and every once in a while, like try yeah. to like scavenge through stuff. And like with the PlayStation activities now, because it will literally just jump to those locations. That's super cool. Yeah, um, t- gets away, gets rid of all that tedium. Um, mm-hmm. So my big complaint here is that the big draw of this game was that you were playing two protagonists in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem I have with it is that there's functionally no difference between those protagonists. Yeah, that's, yeah, I heard that. That's kind of a bummer. And so I was just like, I really wish there was something different. Like when I was playing a rivet section, it, it felt different. Or if I was playing a branch segment, it felt different. I, uh, and there were, yeah. Th- I've heard that. So that's a bit of a bummer. I do have one direct question for you. 
Yeah. Um, is Ratchet snarky in this one? Uh, Ratchet's a little bit snarky, but not as much. He's definitely like got this vibe of like I've done this a lot before, and I'm kind of but he tired. In this wait. Is this off of the 2016 reboot, mm -hmm. or is this after no. Crack in Time? This is after Crack in Time. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that gets me actually more invested, because he, yeah. they kind of neutered his character in the 2016 mm -hmm. reboot. No, he... It makes sense, like, from Crack in Time Rats to this, because Crack in Time Rats is, like, oh, very... Okay. I yeah. didn't know that. Oh, that, yeah. that's pretty exciting. That's cool. But, um... So... So, that's another reason why. It's like, I'm glad we're going with this timeline, because I do like that storyline. Yeah, yeah. Um... So the other thing I have is that in the dimension aspect of this, they there, there's not a lot of like variants mm -hmm. of like the dimension you're going. It definitely to. seemed like a fun tech demo-y thing that is mm -hmm. not like that integral to gameplay. And like I think a big thing about Ratchet Clank that I really like is that I literally like their character designs. Yeah, for a lot of their characters. Rivet looks great. I, Rivet I, looks great. Yeah, super um, cool design. But like, there's another character that's like a really, I, I don't want to say wild design, but like. You're the most unique thing of the cast of characters as new in mm. this design, and I really like you. Um, but it's just like I, uh, I like they reuse a lot of the same characters because you're meeting alternate versions of characters you know. Ooh, from is there game. an alternate Captain Quark? There is. Ooh, I hope he is. I don't know if I want him to be equally a dick bag or if I want him to actually be cool for once. <laughs> I think I think that's where the link kind of like hits like kind of is like what causes it to go down a few points is because mm. you don't have a lot of time to explore yeah. these alternate versions like skin big marks comes back oh. which is wild <laughs> i mean they like using his cameo he's yeah i'm sure the plumber is back and all that all that um, good stuff but, uh, so tyler and bradley are like what the fuck are they talking about <laughs> <laughs> i but i i think it's i think it's good i definitely would recommend like waiting for a sale for this game yeah that's, for $70. that's the goal yeah um and and i was just like i want Ratchet and clank to be one of the first games i played mm -hmm. because i just love that series y'all talking about loki <laughs> no yeah <laughs> yeah um but i uh so i was like i'm gonna buy it but i was like you know i've i would have been more satisfied if i bought this for like 40 or 50 dollars comparatively mm -hmm. um i'm still having a great time i'm doing like the arena quest right now there's only oh. 15 of them oh uh, but, but the arena is always so freaking fun it, they're so hard. Nice. Some of those, some of them are pretty hard. Like yeah. the, the ones that are hardest are the ones that are like you can only use this one gun. You're like fuck. Ooh. Hope and, you, um, hope you oh, modded that one out. I do not remember. Do they have like the skill tree mod systems in the early? They have the it in the game? 2016 one. Okay, I didn't play the 2016 one, so yeah. this was the first time where I got the experience that we're like, yeah, that, that's a this. fun, that's a fun little system. It was, I really liked it, but they keep the leveling up system for the gun, so when you hit max level, it changes to, like, an upgraded version of that gun Oh, wait. Still. So now they have one for Ratchet as well? Like, a, a skill tree? No, not for okay, Ratchet. Okay, no, yeah, it's for the guns, right? Each, okay. each gun has a skill tree, yeah, yeah, but then, yeah, like, yeah. when you hit the max level of that gun, like, there's a double-barrel shotgun. When you hit the max level for it, it automatically turns into a four-barrel shotgun, basically. Cool. Um, and then there's um, other upgrades you can get for it as well. I look forward to playing this at some point. I sh I gotta do it by the end of the year, but thankfully it's a short game. We need more short, short game. games, even though like it, it's gonna be pricey. But I guess that, that I'm not pretending like I care about price is, is like I'm just lying. Wait, what are you talking about? Returnal was really short. It was like 15 <laughs> hours. Yeah, but I mean, but that will, like yeah, exactly. I mean that yeah yeah sure. It's the same length as Returnal for me. Mm -hmm. I mean some people are putting seventy hours in Returnal and Tyler's like they bad and he's not wrong. Okay, last topic. Everyone, all hands. I guess except for Joe. All hands on deck. Let's talk about Pokemon Unite, which came oh, out. Girl. Where the fuck is Blastoise? He's coming. He's, he's coming. literally the first launch character. Shut up, he's Joe. Not in. Joe, I promise. There's other characters you'll like. <laughs> Um, Pokemon Unite came out. It's a free-to-play Nintendo Switch game currently. It'll be on mobile. I It would be cool if they add this to PC just so everyone can, can experience yeah. but, like, nah, it's a Nintendo fuck game. The, fuck the hardcores. Yeah, fuck the hardcores. Give me these casual normies. I mean, we get stomped sometimes, so we, we run into adults for sure. All I know I, is... I automatically assume if I get stomped, the other team had pay to win. See? That is a crutch that I can't always assume. <laughs> Uh, Bradley, you were saying? All I'm saying is, 
from day one. From day me, one? Me and Willer knew this was the fucking game. Okay. But okay. everyone else on the internet was like, literally nobody wants this. What a stupid idea. I want to bring this up because while everyone was being a little sour bitch that you didn't get the Diamond and Pearl remake, which looks like shit, by the way, now that you're getting it. <laughs> um, when that came out, me and Bradley were like, wait. Everyone's gonna be excited about this, right? This has so much potential. We watched some of the gameplay. We're like, Bradley, this looks kind of real. This looks cool. And then we looked up the mechanics, and then like we started looking into people's reactions, and they're just like, "This is a waste of time." Tencent bad. Nobody asked for this. And up until last week, when they would be like, "Hey guys, Pokemon Unite coming soon," people were like, "Shut up! No one cares about this. Talk about Pokemon Arceus, which, by the way, looks like shit." So it's like. I mean, it looks as no, good no, as I mean, the, it's not the, as... the wild zone. And... No, I'm being it harsh on Arceus. I, it'll look better when it comes out, fingers crossed. But uh, me and Bradley have been repping day it, one. That game won't come out for another four years. Get ready. Hopefully. No, you wish. If it came out in four years, it would be polished. They don't have time to polish. They're a fucking money printing machine, unfortunately. All I know is anyone got... who likes Pokemon Unite now is a poser. You're all posers. Um, I, I, I never said anything bad about it. Yeah, no, Tyler's been neutral. Like, Tyler was hesitantly excited. Uh, that's respectful. I'm, I'm only... talking about the, the little sour bitches that were like, I thought this would be shit. Like Twitter. Yeah, T Twitter is such a bad place. Um, let, I want to get the bad, like, the by far the negative of this game out of the way first, which is the way that they handle items. They do it like the old rune system from League. And y'all, there's a reason why they moved away from that rune system to the new one, because the new one's just better. And, like, having this progression of runes... Honestly, it's not as bad of a problem as that Twitter post or th that Reddit post made it seem, because, like, that there's some people that want this game to fail. And when I read that Reddit post, I was like... How much of this is you doom saying? Because I'm getting a shit ton of rewards for playing. But so, there's definitely I, that I, element, and it needs to be addressed. It, it, it does have pay-to-win elements very heavily. Um, well, not too heavily, but it's like... It, it, the game it, is simple it, enough that those actually mean a lot. Like, I watched yeah. a Critical's video today. He dropped, like, $400 on the game because that's his content. He gets... Yeah. That's a tax I mean, he'll, he'll make it back, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's like, he maxed out, like, his basic attack damage items. Those things were, like, doing huge damage compared to not having those, like, maxed out. And getting the max, like, the max level for these held items is 30. Mm -hmm. Um, these held items are essentially runes, masteries, if you played any other MOBAs, like League. Yeah. Like, that's what they are going in. They, like... Increase your basic attacks, some crit damage, some well, they give you some ability. They power. function like that, but they play more like items in league. It's a little hybrid of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have levels to them, and you have to use your in-game currency to buy items to level up those items, and it scales. Uh, how many items required to level each one up? Now, someone did the math, and it's only, like, it's not that many tickets to get one item, but it might take you a little while to get a full set of three um, yeah. to, for bare like, minimum. From, it, like, if you play Pokemon Go, 1 to 20, not that bad, you know? 20 to 30? Fuck that noise. So, the bare minimum, I think, is you gotta get three of them to 20, and then you're at least, mm. like, on the same, like, level. But the thing is, like, the reason why the pay-to-win is kind of stilted is that you can't go infinitely once you max out that item you can only bring three items to battle so it's not like well he maxed out six items but i only have three if you have three you're at the max power but it's just a, it's unfortunate that this system has to be here because i think everything else about the game is super cool and here's something i actually don't mind is the like trainer cosmetics oh i think like the train yeah. the trainer cosmetics don't really mean anything because it's statistics like it is straight up menu aesthetic only and like what your trainer card looks like. I mean they your trainer pops you... up in battle. Uh like uh when you catch Oh Pokemon, yeah, when they're yeah. throwing stuff. But it's minor, it's uh, minor. Yeah, it's very minor. Um, but the amount of like free trainer cosmetics you get and like you get loot boxes in the game and it either gives you gold, but you can also get the chance to get some of those trainer cosmetics. Yeah. And there's like three or four different ways to get trainer cosmetics and some Pokemon skins. Um, 
it like there are skins in the game, but the skins are bad anyway. Like the skins like, really suck. I like I like a, I like like half of them. Like I really like Pirate Cinderace. Cinderace. I would say is the um, only good one. I really like the Talonflame one. I really like the Mr. Mime one. I really like the Garchomp one. Um, like their Pokemon that already look cool. Like yeah. I want, add more Pokemon. Ma I want game. Magical Girl costumes on Charizard. Bradley, when you get Delphox and Braxian, you're gonna get it. Oh, <laughs> yo! God willing. God. Delphox, damn. one of my Let's favorite go. mons, man. I hate Delphox <laughs> hard. There's a whole tier list about this very discussion. <laughs> um, I. It will be exciting to see the content that comes out with it because they have Blastoise as the first character. They added Zero Aura. Um, and then, yeah, Guard of War. And then they haven't announced the third one, but it's like, I really hope the pace that they come out with Pokemon is not like takes two or three months for one. Like, that's a really. If it takes two or three months for one Pokemon, this game is not going to last. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that because if like if they go at the pace of League, they'll be fine, and like there's less no, animations of voice no, work. No, they will not be fine. All right, bet. That's that's bet my right point. now. Bet right now. I will bet. All right, cool. I don't know what we'll, we'll figure out the stakes later, but I don't agree with you. I the reason why is because League didn't used to have that model. League used to have the Eternal Return model where they just shit out a random champion every two fucking weeks, and that's what made them survive. They had to catch up to Dota in their huge roster that they had. There's a reason why Overwatch died so quickly. Damn. It, it, like, All right, and don't Overwatch get me wrong. Is, you can't be Overwatch slow. That's like the oh, that's Overwatch a different Overwatch is level. not dead by any means, but it had a drastic drop off from in player base. Oh, and I, I and mean, I so think, is this like league, league like it, it's gonna have a drop off and then it's gonna slowly climb up in time. That's how all these games go. Yeah, I, I think roster plays a large role yeah. into that and having a lot of selection to choose from. Now, to be fair, they already have the models for the Pokemons to start off of. The Pokemon look simpler than a character with a bunch of clothes. The Pokemon aren't voiced. They don't have lines that they got to say to Fiddlesticks and Misfortune. They uh, they do have more attacks, but they also reuse a they lot of attack animations. They don't with skins. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, a lot of them are. Pro I bet aren't gonna launch with skins, and the skins are just adding on clothes on top of the Pokemon. So they do have a way to make this easy. Also, they've probably already made a shit ton of money in the in the first three days. Um, and China, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just, just China. Yeah. I I think there will have to be some evolution to the core game mode of it. Like it's really fun. I enjoyed a lot. I like how. The matches are like only ten minutes. Like oh, that's, that's how long you have part. to win. Yeah, it, it's great. Um, I think that they will have to evolve their game mode over time, and that's the issue that we deal with with current games. Is like a lot of like we like who are they? Who's their competition? League of Legends and Dota. Dota is so ingrained in hardcore skill sets, and so is League. Through mouse and keyboard, but I, I think Arena of Valor would be a viable like competitor for them as well. But I don't I know. Agree. I don't know much about that. <laughs> so, uh, I just I think their core game mode lacks something, but I'm not sure what. Here's the this thing: is a, this is a very casual MOBA, and I enjoy that. I don't think that's true. Um, it, I and here's why: I've been following Ioki play it. He's like. Uh, grandmaster like support player and all that mm. and he he was playing a lot he's like actually once you get to the high levels there is a lot of depth and nuance to these fights there's they, they i think they designed a very good game what's happening is we're getting these weird swings where we stomp people who are who are either children or are adults who are like pokemon but have never played a moba and everything in between once we get to higher ranks like yesterday we were playing and we were making these insane comebacks if there's one thing I would change about the scoring system is that, like, maybe reduce that that uh, final stretch of score to a 1.5 multiplier as opposed to a 2. Um, aside from that, though, I do honestly think they actually made a, a really solid MOBA that doesn't drown you in kind of mechanics, but is also, like, 
just the changing your moves and bringing your three held items and knowing how to navigate the map and when to when to do jungle camps when to try to score like there's a whole meta to trying to score that has already fascinated me because i fought this wiggly tough that would just charge into oh, my yeah. goal and let her partner score it was like that is such an interesting use for that character um oh that is cool uh, yeah, because she can walk up and sing, right? And as as long as you stand in the sing, you sleep. So you, you try to step out of the sing, well, now you're no longer in the goal zone, so her partner can Damn. score. Or you stay in the sing, and then you sleep, and her partner can score. So it's actually pretty interesting that way. Um, I will say, hands down, this is the best MOBA in the world to pick up and try for the first time. Yeah, definitely. It's. I think, I think it has a really low skill floor and a deceptively high skill ceiling. May not, we're not talking like... I don't think this is gonna hit like League or Dota, but I think it's gonna hit a respectful, like a respectable look. Comparison. Here's my thing. Hold on, hold on. Let Bradley. Bradley speak. Yeah. Two reasons. I'm out. <laughs> All right. Number one, we need to slow down the pacing of the game so it lasts like 40 minutes longer. Mm, okay. Go on. Also, Pokemon Unite doesn't tell you how many times you died. <laughs> it should tell you how many times you died. So I know who to put the fucking blame on. <laughs> uh, as it joking, does give you a score at the end, and if somebody has less than 20, you blame them. Well, yeah. if they have a lot of kills and assists. Nope, nope. If they oh, have less, those come add on. that ending score. Those things add up. I'm not talking about score overall. I'm talking like the very final calculation. Their score less than 20, you blame them. You blame your loss on them. You report them for AFK. Oh my God, Tyler! So, Tyler is such a MOBA player through and through. You know. Oh I, yeah, I'm a piece of shit. How do y'all feel about not showing your score in the game? Because I'm of the side that I think it's actually a good idea, personally. I, I like it. I, I'm of the side information is knowledge, but I enjoy it for the casual <sighs> aspect. But not knowing it keeps you trying and and like it, it's just a a minor ui thing that actually impacts the mood of the player a lot imo same with not showing your deaths like i, um, I wouldn't say it's minor i would think it's very major like like we were we played a few that. games yesterday and it's like there is a forfeit system in the game yeah and um, I, there was one where i was like tyler should we forfeit and we kept playing and we came back from a huge deficit yeah we won yeah and like but we didn't know till the I, very end and that's very hype the forfeits I've seen, I've been like, at five, because you can't FF until halfway through the game, which is five minutes. Mm -hmm. The forfeits I've seen were like, at five minutes, it was like 500 to eight. You could come and back from like, that. You can totes come back from you that. You can, <laughs> absolutely. But not at the rate you're playing. Joe looks like, what? He, I don't know. He just looks surprised. I, don't I, know I think the average score before the two minute mark is around, I'd say two or 300. Uh, it, I feel like as we were climbing up the ranks, me and Tyler went on a, a bit of a tear yesterday with uh, me, Tyler, and then me, Tyler, Ryan. Um, I will say. Who's been on the podcast, by the way. Uh, and, like, I best. feel like the higher we climb, the less you, like, each score matters a lot because it's really hard to break that deadlock. You can play five-man ranked and fucking climb like it's nothing. Like, mm, at this point in the worse game. at five-man ranked. I feel like it pairs you up with higher level players. But you can't. Yeah, you can. Um, speaking speaking of Ryan, I'm gonna plug our podcast. Um, if you haven't been listening to the the Stormlight Archives, I'm on uh, chapter uh, 47. Yeah, check us out, Tyler. Check. Are you gonna listen to our talk when you finish? Nope. Sure. I mean, oh, absolutely. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, wow. Tyler hates his friends, and he uh, hates what we do here. He's only here because I don't know. He just likes wasting an hour and a half. I am subscribed and get alerts for our Speaking videos. Speaking yeah. of our friends, we for I meant to mention this in free talk, but I totally forgot. Uh, two of our friends, ah, Tyler yes. and Trevor. Uh, just had their game release. Oh, yeah. uh, Orcs Must Die 3! So, well, three. caveat. The Orcs yeah. Must Die 3, they work for Robot... This is our friends Trevor and Kyle, because I think I interrupted it when Joe was saying it. Yeah. Um, it released on Stadia, but we don't really talk about the Stadia on this podcast, <laughs> so it released <laughs> on Steam today. Uh, mm -hmm. So shout-outs to first, them. Go first buy their time game. ever, this is the launch date. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's right now, it's on... It's, like, top of, like... Trending. new and trending number one and trending yeah yeah uh on steam it's mostly positive uh it's a i've played orcs must i like one and two before they're fun games uh they're very simple games but they get more complex over time and like what made two really fun is the multiplayer and three has more multiplayer aspects of that so but check it out 
It's only thirty dollars on Steam, so I think it'd be a good pickup for y'all. Y'all, that's the podcast. But uh, I want to leave y'all with a question. I'm no, not gonna no. do a hypothetical. Mm. Uh, this is real. What is not your favorite blue character? Go. This is deceptively oh. hard. This is deceptively hard. It seems simple. Man, the gross sisters from the Proud family. You don't mean that. <laughs> you don't fucking mean yeah, that. He does. Bradley meant to answer Sonic. He's fucking lying. Mm. I'm gonna go with Mega Man. No, Snap from Chalk Zone. Oh, I was it thinking did, of did we say video game character or just character? Just, in just blue character. No. Who's your favorite blue character? Blue from Fosters. Fuck oh, you. I, did, I was thinking blue from Fosters. All right. That's, I, don't people hate blue also? He's a sociopath. My first thought was Blastoise. Yeah. But I, that might have been just because of Pokemon. I thought you'd go Blastoise. Uh, I... But like I'm also trying to think of other blue characters. The only other blue thing I think of is Obi Wan, but that's just a blue lightsaber. That is not no, he does not count in the blue talk. He's not a blue character, no. no. Um, let's see. Any blue skin of any character I play. Uh blue Giovanna. There we go. Really? Uh, Over Blastoise? No, oh. Blastoise is King Bay. Yeah, you're fucking Alright. There you go. <laughs> that's that's our podcast. I'm, I'll... I'm gonna go with Blue Rick. <laughs> go for well, mr meeseeks I, I choose blue goku all right tyler you get the discussion question of next week uh or oh, next shit. podcast all right oh Yo. man i had one for this one but i forgot it it's gone damn well, we'll, we'll get it, we'll get it next time. week yeah. all right goodbye everyone bye-bye bye bye